Okay, we've seen um, reactions where we take something like a ketone and aldehyde. So I'm going to draw a ketone. This ketone is a weak electrophile. And so the way we attack this carbonyl is we need to pair it with a strong nucleophile. And I'm just going to write some generic N minus. This is a strong nucleophile. Seeing this over and over again, what happens? We attack the carbonyl. We get our tetrahedral intermediate. And the tetrahedral intermediate can have different outcomes, but probably the most common one that we saw is that we'll protonate it. Great. And now we've done our nucleophilic addition to a carbonyl, and we used a strong nucleophile up top here to react with our weak electrophile. That's great. So this is our old stuff. Now just because I'm labeling it as old doesn't mean we're going to forget about it. This is still an important reaction. We'll use it a lot, but we're going to see a new way to attack carbonyls. So, new. Okay, so let's start with a carbonyl. Again, I've chosen to do a ketone. This could be an aldehyde. And this is still a weak electrophile. Nothing has changed. Now, how do we get, um, common question is how do we get a weak nucleophile to attack our weak electrophile? So what's an example of a weak nucleophile? How about methanol? How do we get methanol to attack? Well, the easiest way is to do the reaction in a strong acid. So this is a weak nucleophile and somehow adding a strong acid is going to help our, our problem that we want these two things to react. So uh, in strong acid, strong acid methanol is going to make protonated methanol. So that is going to be the acid we will use. Uh, we will protonate our carbonyl because that's what acids do. They protonate things. And so now we get this protonated carbonyl. Now, it may not be obvious to you, but this, this carbonyl is now a strong electrophile. And you might say, I, I don't see how that's a strong electrophile. Well, if we think of a resonance form, and I'm not going to draw the arrow, but we're going to break this CO pi bond, put the electrons up on oxygen. And if we draw that resonance form, we'll now have two lone pairs on oxygen and a carbocation. Now carbocations are clearly strong electrophiles and we know exactly what happens to strong electrophiles because we've seen them from like the SN1 and the E1 reactions. Strong um, uh, carbocations undergo nucleophilic attack. That's the fate of a carbocation. So let's start from this form and now once we protonate this carbonyl, our weak nucleophile which has been waiting for an opening, can now react with our strong electrophile. So now we have a pair, a reaction pair, that makes sense. A strong and a weak partner. That gets us to here. Note that there's a hydrogen on our methanol. That hydrogen is still present in our product. We haven't broken that bond. We've only formed this new CO sigma bond and broken the pi bond. So now we, to get a neutral product, we need a, a second step. We're going to have to deprotonate. And the best base we have available is our solvent. And that gets us to this, this, uh, this product. Now this may or may not be our final product, but what we've done is we've done an addition reaction. We've done an addition of a weak nucleophile here in the middle of the screen, a weak nucleophile methanol, and we've managed to react our weak nucleophile with, an, with a weak electrophile by first protonating the carbonyl to make it into a strong electrophile. So this is an acid catalyzed process instead of being purely under basic conditions. So the top we're under basic conditions and the bottom we're under acidic conditions. We're going to see a lot of this acidic reaction pathway in upcoming videos.